In the RF properties video, we saw that there was something called attenuation. Attenuation simply means the loss through the air. But there's something else called free space path loss that is actually different, or I should say maybe additive to attenuation. It, if you've ever heard, and if you actually have watched all the other videos in order, you've heard me talk about that lower frequencies travel farther. Actually, what I said is lower frequencies have a higher effective range. I was very careful to say that. The reason is, is because there's a fairly well propagated myth out there that says that low frequencies travel farther. Technically speaking, that is not true. Low frequencies and high frequencies travel the same through what's called free space. Um, that they will have the same range no matter what. If you measure one versus the other, they will have the same amount of energy uh, at the same point. So why is it that we know that low frequencies are more effective from a farther distance? This is the other part of free space path loss. So why do we need to know what free space path loss is? Path loss simply means if I start at point A with a certain amount of signal, let's say it is 100 somethings, and when I get to location B, I'm going to have less signal. Maybe I have 20 somethings when I get there. The loss between point A and point B, maybe this is five kilometers. Why did I lose that? It's more than just attenuation. It's what's called free space path loss. So you'll need to learn to calculate it. Well, not really. You just go on the internet and you type in FSPL calculator and you type in the distance and the frequency and you come out with a number. That's kind of cheating. That's the way I've always done it, to be honest with you. So free space path loss is a combination of attenuation, which is something we talked about, the uh, uh, inverse square law. And the other is called antenna aperture. This is where FSPL gets complicated. But I want you to know, when you watch this video and you understand this, you're already ahead of a bunch of people in the Wi-Fi industry that think that lower frequencies travel farther, because they don't. They're all the same. But here's why lower frequencies are more effective. They have a higher effective range. When an antenna is designed, it is designed based on the wavelength. Now remember, wavelength is truly the length of the wave. Lower frequencies have a longer wavelength. Uh, short, uh, uh, lower, sorry, higher frequencies have a shorter wavelength. So there's this proportion of wavelength versus um, frequency that we learned about in the previous video. That also comes into antenna design. So for example, if you have something at 27 megahertz versus something at 2.4 gigahertz, this being a very low frequency compared to this one, when, they when an antenna designer builds an antenna, they build it based on a wavelength. Now we're not going to get into antenna design, but it is based on a wavelength. Well, which one has a bigger wavelength? Well, the lower frequency has a much larger wavelength, which means the same designed antenna. For example, a quarter wavelength antenna. Literally, you take a quarter, you measure, the, you know the wavelength, the quarter of that distance, let's make an antenna that long. Of course, it's a bit more complicated, but that really is the simple version of it. That this being at 12 centimeters, and a quarter of that being three, we may have a three centimeter antenna, where over here, this could end up being like a three meter antenna. It's three centimeters versus three meters of the same antenna design. So why is it that this lower frequency has a higher effective range? Because with the exact same antenna design, which antenna is larger? Three centimeters or three meter antenna? Three meter antenna is as tall as my building here. So which one will listen more? Well, what's the advantage of having really big ears? There's more surface area to receive the signal. So a lower frequency antenna, because it's larger just because of its wavelength, will receive signals more. It'll receive more signal, meaning a higher effective range. So these two components, attenuation and uh, antenna aperture, fancy way of saying antenna size, 
Those two together equal free space path loss. When you do an FSPL calculation, it asks for the frequency and the distance. Attenuation has nothing to do with frequency. Attenuation is just the signal propagates and it goes out in the inverse square law. We lose six decibels for every time we double the distance. It has nothing to do with frequency. But because of this component that we just saw here, frequency is an important factor because in real life, that must be taken into account. If I'm going to try to do a wireless link between point A and point B, I need to know the loss between those. The inverse square law, the attenuation alone won't get that for me. It has to have the frequency component to understand that the antenna size makes a difference. So hopefully that helps. Now if you're a little fuzzy on this, keep going. And the reason I say that, we haven't really talked about antennas yet. We haven't talked about, uh, or maybe you're skipping around, so maybe you haven't looked at the antenna portion. You may not have looked at the, at the decibel or power measurement portion. So this is just one of those things that, you know, we may have to come back to and review again, and it may become more clear. But I thought it was important to talk about FSPL in one separate video because it's a very important topic uh, and does have some myths with it. With it. So glad we broke those, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.